Well, we are going to continue advancing. And we are going to explain another component that you will also find in the source area. We are going to locate it in this area. And we are going to draw it here. This component is the transformer. Its function is to reduce the voltage. In order to work, it needs to have alternating current. A transformer, if we disassembled it, would be several plates in the form of E. And in the form of I. Glued one above the other, in which there is a copper winding, which makes a sinusoidal wave, which constantly makes the electrons go from one side to the other. It magnetizes the core, and that magnetism excites the secondary coil. Primary and secondary. And makes the electrons come out the other side with a sinusoidal wave, but with different voltage. If we have a 220 volt input here, the output will depend on how the transformer is made. In the air conditioning units, we will generally find a 12 volt output. How does a transformer reduce voltage? We can compare it to water, since in this way we will easily understand it. Imagine the following. Imagine that we have a thin water tube that ends in a thick tube. What happens to the water pressure at this point? If the water pressure at that point is high, the water pressure in this area will be lower due to space issues because here we have more space for the water to pass through. The same principle of operation has the transformer. High pressure for a thin pipe. When we find a thick pipe, low pressure, that is why the copper winding on the primary side is much finer than the winding on the secondary side, which has to end with low pressure or low voltage. This is important to understand because now I am going to teach you how to check if it is in good or bad condition but without voltage, because perhaps what you do is inject voltage at this point and measure from this other side, but we are going to do it a safer way we are going to corroborate it with resistance. Let's grab our transformer and set the multimeter to resistance. In resistance, and what we are going to do now is control the primary side. The primary side is generally the thickest wires. And the secondary side is the thinnest wires. We will control the primary side. And look that we find. This is an auto ranging multimeter. So 0 0.569 kilo ohms. We actually take out the comma. We take out the K which means multiply with by a thousand, and then we have 569 ohms. We are going to confirm the secondary side. And on this secondary side we now have Approximately 3 ohms. 3 ohms. What does this tell us? Let's draw it to understand it better. On the primary side, we find 569 ohms. And on the secondary side, we just found 3 ohms. 
Clearly the primary winding is much thinner and longer than the secondary, that is why it exerts much more resistance to the passage of electrons, while the secondary side exerts less resistance to the passage of electrons of only 3 ohms. In a transformer that is in good condition, they will find a resistance of between 150 to 600 ohms on the primary side and on the secondary side they will find 1 to 5 ohms, approximately. This is a good way to tell if a transformer is good or not, because you are doing it by measuring the resistance of the coils. If this side, the primary side, gives us O, L, ISO significa open line, this means that what happened with the transformer is that it cut off, or if it gave us, perhaps, a resistance of 2 ohms. Obviously something is wrong, it's short-circuited, something that is also harmful. If I inject 220 volts with 2 ohms, I will surely make a big spark and it will burn even more. And it would pass the same on the secondary side if I have a very high resistance, surely something has charred, and if I get O, L, obviously this coil has been cut. Taking into account the parameters, within all normal, that a transformer brings, you can know if it is in good condition, in this case O. L is bad. 2 ohms would be bad, O. L would be bad. And these are the values we just found in the sample transformer. One more detail, regarding the transformer, if they come across a transformer that marks them on the primary side O, L, if they can change it, they will change it, but if they perhaps do not have the spare part, they have the option of disarming it in this area. And in this part there is a fuse, and since the electronic board has a fuse, you could make a bridge and put it to work again. If this is the problem, the internal fuse, you can disarm here and try that method. Another detail so that you do not get confused. A moment ago, I told you that the primary side was the thinnest winding, and the secondary side was the thickest winding, although visually it is exactly the other way around. But why is the thinnest side actually thicker, and the thicker side internally is thinner? Well, this is a matter of protection for us. Although the winding is much finer on this side, it handles more voltage and could be dangerous if it is bitten by a cable, it gets pinched or it gets in contact. Instead on this side it only it handles 12 or 24 volts. We don't need to put such thick cables to protect people, but internally it's exactly the other way around, remember. A thinner pipe with high voltage flows into a thicker pipe, from which the voltage is lowered by decantation. The transformer, another important piece in the source area, a detail to remember, transformers only work with alternating current, it is an important detail to take into account for other issues that we are going to discuss later. They also have another way to test it, if you already see that the resistance is correct, it is to inject voltage on the primary side and measure the voltage on the secondary side. This is always. With alternating current, measurements with the multimeter and DC current not, we change the AC option. Excellent, this is what it has to do with the transformer.